Hey guys, what's up? Today we've got an example here that says find the work done in pumping water out of a full spherical tank of radius 3 meters if there is a spout 1 meter above the tank. So kind of just to visualize that a little bit. Let's put our tank here and then let's, uh, let's try to figure out how to pump the water out of it. So what we're going to do is kind of silly to be honest, but we're going to try to make little thin sheets of water and take them out one at a time. So if I draw like a really thin sheet of water right here, I'm going to take that sheet of water and try to pump it out all by itself, which of course is a silly thing to say. But if I look at just this sheet of water, that can help me figure out how to pump out all of the water or how much work I'm going to do to pump out all the water. So this sheet of water has a thickness of delta y. So that thickness right there is delta y. And I'm going to find the work done in pumping out this one sheet of water. So to get the work, I need the distance and I need the force or the pounds in this case, or actually it's going to be um, the newtons. So that's going to be my force in this case because I got kilograms. So the volume, I need the volume so I can get the mass. So the mass of this little sheet of water would be the density, rho, times the volume of the sheet of water. Okay, so this sheet of water is essentially like a very small cylinder, a very thin circular cylinder. So this volume, delta V, is going to be pi r squared times h, where here h is the thickness or the height of this little thin cylinder of water. So that's actually the height, delta y. Now what's the radius of this cylinder of water? Well, the radius is actually dependent on the y value. So this would be your radius r. However, that would change if you move up or down inside of this spherical tank. So it's actually Pythagorean theorem relationship between the r value, this value, which is 3, and then this height over here, which is what we call y. So this is at a height of y right here. So r, by the Pythagorean theorem, we could say r. So r squared plus y squared would be equal to 3 squared. So r squared plus y squared should be equal to 9 because of the relationship with the sphere and then these two sides of my triangle. So if I solve for r by itself, or actually I need r squared, so if I solve for r squared, r squared is equal to 9 minus y squared. All right, so that is our r squared value. So our volume now at this point, we could say our volume of this little thin sheet of water is equal to pi times 9 minus y squared times delta y. And that's in meters cubed. So that's in cubic meters, meters cubed. Now, I can get my mass if I multiply my density by this value here. So mass of this little sheet of water, delta mass, is equal to 1,000 times delta V. So 1,000 pi 9 minus y squared delta V. Oh, sorry, delta Y. All right, so that's our mass. Now, that's the mass of this little green sheet of water. That's how, much ki that's how many kilograms are in that sheet of water. So kilograms right here for the units of this. Oops, sorry. Yeah, kilograms. So <laughs> to get the force, I've got to multiply my mass by the acceleration due to gravity. And I'm going to use g equals 9.8 
meters per second squared. So I'm just going to use 9.8. Sometimes people use 10. Like on a test or something, I would I would probably you know tell students to use 10, but um, some people might use 9.81. It just depends on you know what you're doing. But the force, the force or the yeah, I should say the weight or the force of this little green sheet of water is going to be 9.8. So it's going to be delta mass times g. So 9.8 times 1,000 would be 9,800. So 9,800 pi. And then 9 minus y squared delta y. And now our units are going to be newtons. So once I go from mass to force in SI units, it becomes newtons. As long as all my units are working out fine. So that's the force. And now I've got to figure out, okay, how far is this going to travel to get out of the tank? Well, it's going to travel from where it is right here at y all the way up to y equals 4. So it's got to travel from where it is all the way up to 4. That distance, this distance right here, is a distance of 4 minus y. So this distance is 4 minus y. So the distance that it's got to travel, distance, that this sheet of water has to travel to get out to the top of the tank is 4 minus y. So because there's a, a spout one meter above the tank, we do 4 minus y. If we're just somehow able to go out of the top of the tank, we would do 3 minus y, but there's a spout one meter above the top of the tank. So Now, that's the force. That's the distance. We can get the little bit amount of work. So how much work is required to move this sheet of water? Well, it's going to be force times distance. So 9800 pi times 9 minus y squared. That's the force. Well, the delta y needs to be included. And then the distance is 4 minus y delta y. And now that's joules. So joules. Okay, so that's how many joules it takes to just get that one green sheet of water out the top of the tank. Now to get the total work, I just integrate everywhere that the water is this expression. So integrate from negative 3 to 3 in the y direction. 9800 pi times, I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out or FOIL it out. So it'll be 36 minus, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the inside, so negative 4y squared. The outer would be negative 9y plus the inner, or plus the last would be y cubed dy. So that is our integral that we're going to integrate, or that's the function that we're going to integrate. So let's see what that ends up being. So I can pull that 9800 pi out. So 9800, let me say w is going to equal 9800 pi integral from negative 3 to 3. 36, let's see, minus 4y squared minus 9y plus y cubed dy. All right, so we're over a symmetric interval, and if we're over a symmetric interval, the odd pieces will integrate to 0, so this integral is going to be 0 and the integral of y cubed over the symmetric interval will be 0, since those are both odd functions. And so we're left with 9800 pi, integral negative 3 to 3, 36 minus 4y squared dy. And actually, this is now an even function, so what I can do is I can say that that's 9800 pi, 
times 2, integral 0 to 3, 36 minus 4y squared dy. And I'll just integrate those, and so we'll get 9800 pi times 2, and then 36y minus 4 over 3y cubed from 0 to 3. And we could rewrite that again as 9800 pi times 36 times 2 would be 72. Oh, I forgot to write the y there, sorry. 36y. So that'd be 72y minus, so I'm bringing that 2 inside, so that'll be 8 over 3y cubed from 0 to 3. And that ends up being 9800 pi times, let's see, 72 times 3, though it's 216, minus um, 3 cubed is 27, divide that by 3, we get 9, so 8 times 9 is 72. And at the end of the day, I guess you keep going, this 144, and then 144 times 9800 ends up being 1,411,000 200, and then just leave that pi the way it is, and then that's in joules. So quite a big answer, but uh, it's a big tank full of water, so makes sense. Let's see, probably like, I don't know, four megajoules or so, since pi is multiplied onto that, so probably four or five megajoules, somewhere around there. Anyway, that's, uh, that's how we do it.